today I'm taking the channel back to its roots. Hi everyone. This is a nice 1981 Columbia medallion moped. Columbias were kind of interesting because while most mopeds of this time period were all imports from overseas, primarily from European countries, Columbia was a domestic manufacturer of bicycles, a very old one at that, that in the 1970s and 80s just sort of decided to take a crack at making mopeds. Now while much of this bike is made in the US, including the frame, suspension, and rims, some of it is, as we would say now, assembled domestically of global components. And as the eagle-eyed viewers have already spotted, probably the biggest of those components is the engine. The engine is a German-built Zox 505. It's a 50cc two-stroke. And these are a fairly common moped engine fitted on a lot of Zox models like the Prima G3 and the Balboa. Now, moped enthusiasts aren't a huge fan, typically, of the Zox engines because they lack a lot of the quick, cheap, go-fast parts that you can just buy and bolt onto something like a Tomos or a Pook and just instantly get a ton of speed out of it. The Zox engines, they're not really designed for high power. They're more designed for just reliable cruising, and that's what most Zox bikes do really well. You know, they'll go 30 miles an hour, 35 miles an hour all day and be very reliable, which to me is really nice. Another clearly imported part of this bike is the nice complement of Magura handlebar controls. All these switches and brake levers and stuff are sort of off the shelf moped parts. And one interesting thing about Columbia being a bicycle manufacturer is that some of this moped is a little bit closer to a bicycle than you might think. If you notice here, a lot of the cables are bicycle cables with no kind of adjuster or anything. It's just a, a basic bike cable. And the rims are quite interesting on this bike because they're more akin to a scaled up bike rim than they are a sort of scaled down motorcycle rim like you might be used to on a moped. They actually use a thinner spoke than a typical motorcycle or moped rim. And so if they have problems, it can be really tricky to fix them. And these somewhat unique rims are actually one of the biggest problems I faced when fixing this bike up. The rear wheel had multiple broken spokes and the owner of this bike took it to a different mechanic shop that really didn't know what they were doing. And the guy there installed bicycle spokes in the rear wheel, but he didn't tighten them up all the way. And so when the bike was ridden, the wheel just came apart. And because Columbia is obviously somewhat of a defunct company, and it's also kind of a unique rim with the thinner spokes, just going out and getting another wheel is nearly impossible. So I want to take a second to shout out a great company here in Cleveland, Ohio called Lizzie's Wheel Solutions, who I contacted, and they were actually able to take this rim and break it down and rebuild it with upgraded moped thickness spokes, which actually required reaming every hole out in this wheel by hand in order to get these spokes to fit. Um, they didn't want to use power tools because they were afraid of damaging the rim, which I really appreciate because these wheels are so uncommon. And one thing that makes the wheels so uncommon is that unlike a lot of other Zox mopeds, uh, like a Balboa or something like that, which would use a rear coaster brake connected to the pedal, this bike does not. Instead, it has a typical cable actuated drum that's operated right here. A couple other little quirks on this bike that I really like are the molded plastic gas tank that will never rust, along with its gas cap that was swiped off a snowblower or something. And um, I really like this one piece plastic seat that doubles as a storage compartment. It just lifts up here with a couple of little latches and you have a nice amount of storage space in here. You could put a bottle of oil and your registration and maybe a sandwich for lunch. It just flips shut and you got the little clips right here and right here. And um, yeah, other than that, there's not that much that's unique about this moped. But you know, that's kind of why I like it. 
a lot of these sort of lower end, more pedestrian grade mopeds were just ridden to death during the gas crisis or alternately just sort of sat in somebody's garage for a long time and then were bought by people that just wanted to roach them out and modify them to death. And so it's pretty rare to find one like this that's in really nice original condition. I didn't restore this bike, I just cleaned it up a little bit and that's really all it needed. It runs and rides great. And you know, I think this is gonna be a really nice daily driver for many years to come. Speaking of which, let's go for a ride. Now if you've ever ridden any other kind of socks moped before, you're gonna be very familiar with the control layout of this one. The only thing that's kind of unique about this bike is, as I said, they don't use the sort of normal sock style rear coaster brake. Instead, on the left hand side, you have a rear brake handle right here. Other than that, it's all the same as any other sort of typical socks like a G3. You've got your starting lever and decompression valve release right here. You've got a light switch and a horn. You've got your engine start stop. You've got a choke and you've got your throttle. And of course, you have your front brake right there. And unfortunately, I can't start this thing with one hand, so let me get it started and then we'll go for a ride. And there you have it, a nice original 1981 Columbia medallion. These are not a bad moped at all. I definitely suggest looking into one if you already like the top tank style and Zox 505 engine, but maybe don't have Zox G3 money. I don't think a lot of people appreciate these old Columbias, so you might be able to pick one up for a good deal. Anyway, until next time, I'll catch you later.